lot of you have probably got very dodgy contact points with a lot of risk. And uh, if you can, can keep a constant face of the racket when you're meeting the ball on your volleys, it's very important. And a lot of people start from the contact point and go through here, which is pitiful. <laughs> So when you do have time, and one thing uh, I'd like to add to Don is that get into a habit of pivoting your shoulders a little bit, because that helps you cover the wide ball. You can't be going out like this, volleying the wide ball. So as soon as you see uh, the ball leave your opponent's racket, if you have time and it's not hit like a million miles an hour, just pivot early and then you can look at the scenery because you've taken care of your preparation. And it's not a long backswing. As Danny explained, if I pivot from here to there, I haven't even taken a backswing yet. I've just turned the upper body. Now this gives me the opportunity of stepping out with this foot on the wide one and then way across on the other foot so I can really cover the net well rather than just this. So get into a habit of that early pivot. Take care of the preparation. And the head's back, if you can take it back just past the right shoulder, and then way out in front, way out. Now a lot of you should, for the next 10 years, <laughs> stop where you meet the ball until you get a consistent racket face. Then after the tenth year, I'll let you punch through it a little bit. <laughs> Once you learn how to come in and keep that racket face consistent, so it's not all of this stuff. Mo, Mo, I don't have a head yet. <laughs> well, you should have been listening thirty years. <laughs> drill for you all to do and Danny will demonstrate uh, and also uh, Chuck, where are you Chuck? Chuck is on our team and uh, according to uh, Peter Illich Tchaikovsky <laughs> is probably the best volleyer out of Caloundra. <laughs> So we'll see how he volleys. Now the most problem with everybody is they come high to low on every volley, particularly when they're trying to force it. So when you get a high ball up here, make sure the racket's right behind it, and when you hit it, you stay where you meet the ball. Don't come down on it. When it's here, you're right behind it, and then you just keep the racket there. It's not this. If you see your racket down in here, uh, then go home, you're not going to hit any more. <laughs> so whenever you bring a high ball and you want to punch it away, you say to yourself, okay, idiot, keep the racket up where you meet the ball. If you've got the racket's head coming in to meet it, leave it there after you finish the shot so you're not pulling down with the arm. You're not hitting it with your arm, you're hitting it with the head of the racket. So a good drill to do. <coughs> When you stand, you showed him where to stand, Danny? Yeah. Yeah. Those of you who can't move back too well on your overheads should even stand here. Yesterday I walked around and saw a lot of people standing up here, this far from the net. So every time someone served to me and I was playing doubles, I always had a look where the net player was standing because if the server got too good a serve in and I couldn't return it well enough to protect my partner, I had an out with a lob over the head because the idiot was standing too close to the net. <laughs> so when you're standing and playing doubles, make sure you're here. You can always go forward to a volley. And then a lot of you get in here and you haven't put the ball away and you stand here like a stale bottle of piss. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
You haven't put the ball away, so you get back here because the next shot could be a lot of you hit. So think about that when you're playing today. Now, a drill you should do every time after you've played for about five minutes or so is uh, a drill to each other, which will put a bit of blood in your right arm because you're doing a lot of work. There's Rocket here. Mr. Yeah, yeah, Light is yeah, over there. Yeah, 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 Rocket, come on out. I want to have a look at your left arm. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket, come on out. Cool. <laughs> You're looking into the sun there and you can't see us. Now Rocket used to travel with a ball in his hand all the time. And all he did was squeeze the ball to get his... But the problem was when he got married... <laughs> when he married Mary, she got so sick because when Rod turned over in bed and hit her with his left arm <laughs> across the side of the head, uh, that they had to sleep in separate beds. <laughs> because Rod couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. They, whenever they served him wine, because his arm was so big and this one was skinny as hell, uh, <laughs> I come out here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody served Rocket, went to the house, served Rocket. They didn't give him good, <coughs> good wine glasses because he didn't know how strong he was on the left hand and he smashed many <laughs> crystal wine glasses. So we give him a good thick one. because of particularly one here because that was an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you 
you all can do that, then you'll know you'll be able to use your hands well and be good body. Okay, well, we'll come back one more. We'll go back a bit further. Right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, lots of times you get caught there. Back a bit. trouble logging on I'm sorry we did get it all set but we had the rocket out here we had Roy Emerson out here and this will be in your library whether you have a free or paid pass this is gonna go up so you'll have it forever and uh, next up is the morning buzz with me and Matt and then we got our, our slicer lesson and then we've got Jeff Solzin coming up at 10 10 15 it's awesome you got the rocket the first day yeah the rocket think about that. and Emerson 